Hi everyone, welcome to my take. I felt inspired to make my first video giving tips for the PhD Viva because I found that my Viva was quite daunting for me in the days leading up to the exam. Um, I didn't know what to expect so I just thought continuing on with the theme of the PhD I'll make another video on another struggle um, which was knowing when your thesis is ready, feeling confident about submission um, and I think that's kind of a common struggle for a lot of PhD students so I thought I'll make a video to kind of help you guys out if you're coming to the end of your PhD and you're soon going to be submitting a thesis and you're not quite sure whether it's ready or you don't feel confident enough about it. I thought I'll come up with a few tips uh, based on my own experience. Uh, looking back, I saw that there were certain things that I perhaps did right, which um, led to my thesis being successful. Um, and I think that these tips could help you as well. Um, just Even just to serve as a checklist, you probably know a lot of these things or all of them already, um, but they're just a few things that I um, that came to my mind which I thought could help you. So let's get started with my top five tips for knowing if your thesis is ready for submission. Tip number one, you're receiving hints. As a PhD student, you have responsibility of managing your own time, um, of writing your thesis. I mean, of course, your supervisors and others around you will help to guide you, but that's all they are doing. They're just facilitating, they're guiding. They're not doing the work. You're the leader of your own project. So in the same way, um, you will be the best person to decide um, what where your thesis stands because you are the expert in your subject. Ultimately, the responsibility of submitting your thesis lies with you. If your supervisor is telling you that you're ready to write your thesis or you have lots of interesting results or you have lots of data or lots of positive comments like that, then you can be quite sure that that is an obvious evidence for you that you are ready uh, to submit your thesis. And what's important also is that your data links into a story. And that leads on to tip number two, which is, is there a story? Your thesis is like a novel. It should have a start where you introduce the scene, the middle where all the main events happen, and the ending, which could very well be a cliffhanger. So just like a novel, you will have all of those three parts to a story, except the introduction will be your beginning, the methods, results, and discussion will make up your middle, and your conclusions will make up the ending. Drawing up your figures and linking them in a sequence is an important part of deciding what will go into your thesis and what you will leave out. It will help you to realise if your story is complete and once you have done this you can then show it to your supervisors and they can help you to decide if you have a complete story or not. Tip number three is that your results and conclusions address the hypotheses. Do your results answer the key questions relating to your hypotheses? As a PhD is research, it delves into the realms of the unknown. So it's quite likely that during a PhD your aims and hypotheses or even sometimes your project as a whole may have been changed um, somewhat at least. So it's important that your conclusions link back to the aims, objectives and hypotheses that you outlined in your introduction. Tip number four is to check that you have interpreted your results correctly. It's very important that you don't overinterpret or underinterpret your results. And I would suggest that you have at least one result section thoroughly checked by your supervisors to ensure that you are interpreting accurately. An aspect of correct interpretation is recognizing the limitations of your results um, and perhaps the approaches that you use to obtain those results. Your findings may lead on to future work that will assert in your findings and build on them too. Tip number five is to ensure that you have followed your thesis guidelines to a T. By the time you get to the end of your PhD, you will be clear about what format your thesis will be in, whether that's the alternative, the practice-based, or the traditional format, which is a thesis format that my thesis was in. Normally, you will need a few first authored papers to be able to submit in the alternative format. Whichever format you agree upon with your supervisors, you have to ensure that your presentation um, abides by the formatting rules for that particular format. If you are a University of Manchester student, I strongly advise you look at the PGR handbook and also the presentation of thesis policy both of which could be found on the intranet. Um, if you can't find them there, then please contact the graduate office. 
Also make sure you have a look at some examples of theses um, and if possible then some theses of PhD students who have gone before you in your present group because their topic will be similar to yours and it might help to see how they sectioned and present, presented their work so that you can present accordingly. The University of Manchester has an uh, archive online, Manchester eScholar, where you can access theses of past PhD students, um, but you can also find out from your own university if you're able to access uh, theses perhaps from the library or from a graduate office or even online at your university too. Um, I'm sure Manchester is not the only one that has an online archive. But it's very important that you look at the presentation of the thesis policy and read it from cover to cover because there will be quite strict guidelines on how you should present your thesis and also they will have some extracts that you have to include in your thesis such as uh, the copyright statement and the declaration so you will have to copy and paste those directly into your thesis so you do have to make sure that you are abiding by all the rules because otherwise there can be delays and I don't know maybe there can be other problems as well so just make sure you do have a look at that and um, there will be a checklist also in the Manchester one there's a checklist at the end so that's quite useful you can make sure that you've checked everything right at the end just before you're about to submit make sure you have some feedback from your supervisors to ensure that everything is in place and your work is up to par also try to proofread your own work um, a couple of times before you submit and if possible you could also ask a friend or your supervisor to proofread it for you. Um, I personally didn't, my thesis was quite long <laughs> so I, I didn't ask anyone to proofread it, I proofread it myself uh, but I always, like, I, I pay attention to detail so I found that when I was reading back I was noticing you know, errors, typos, things like that anyway. Um, and I, I do scrutinise my work, I'm quite critical of my work. But you have to be, when you are a PhD student, you have to be critical, you have to be analytical, you have to make sure that you are interpreting things correctly and the statements that you're making are accurate. So, um, yeah, I mean, it always helps to have a friend or someone to help you do that. But if not, then you're a PhD student and you have all it takes to do it. So. You know you'll be fine and I hope this I hope this video has helped to reassure you and to give you some confidence um, with thesis submission and you've got this far so you have what it takes uh, to continue right through to the end so just be confident in yourself and um, be careful and hopefully you will be successful in getting through your PhD. If you do have any questions or comments or any concerns then please do leave them in the comments section below this video um, and I'll try my best to answer those concerns or any questions or things that you might have um, and if anything requires a detailed answer then I'll be happy to make another video. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, bye!